What is Cycos? It's a bit different from Scilab. Cycos is, a, is an editor, simulator, and code generator for hybrid dynamical systems. That means general dynamical systems where we put together dynamical systems that have continuous time dynamics, discrete time dynamics, you have events. So a very general type of uh, models can be constructed and simulated in Cycos. Now the goal is mostly industrial usage. As you know, Simulink is mostly used uh, in industry, also in teaching and research, of course, but the main uh, usage is in industry. And it is also the same thing for Cycos. I mean, we hope that it becomes the same thing for Cycos. It has been uh, distributed along the same free open source uh, license. Uh, so once you download Scilab, you have Cycos. You can use it right away. Now this is just to give you an idea of what to expect when you run Cycos. It's not a programming language where you type the instructions. You just construct models by connecting blocks that you go into different palettes, you pick them up, you connect them together. Of course, if you're familiar with Simulink, uh, there is no surprise. Uh, in Cycos, it's the same thing. This is one of the first models we developed, uh, actually it was for Renault. Uh, it's a model for a car engine and a controller. They wanted to validate a controller. Actually, we also developed the controller. It was later patented by Renault. And uh, as you see it this way, it looks very simple, but in fact, I should say that the editor is hierarchical. So in the motor block, you actually have uh, more than 100 inside uh, other blocks. And for the controller as well, you have 100 or 150 blocks. So using the hierarchy, it's possible to make abstraction of the models and make them look simple at different levels and to concentrate uh, the difficulties where the difficulties really are and not make uh, huge, uh, uncomprehensible uncom models. As I said before, Cycos is used for model construction. It's a block diagram editor, and there are a number of basic blocks available in different palettes, mostly elementary blocks, which are used in the construction of general purpose diagrams. But there are also some custom blocks, especially for control, for signal processing, and there are many new blocks available in toolboxes for Cycos, uh, which can be tele uh, downloaded from uh, the Cycos website. Now, having Cycos in Scilab is extremely important. That was one of the reasons Simulink was very successful compared to, say, other programs such as System Built, which had a considerable uh, advance over uh, Sim Simulink at the time. It was called Simulab. Uh, that was because Simulink lived within MATLAB. And it's the same thing is true for Cycos living within Scilab is very important because we can use Scilab functionalities in conjunction with uh, Cycos simulations uh, to solve many problems. For example, mo model calibration and validation. You want to do simulation to compare to with real data to find maybe the optimal parameters that uh, correspond to, to your model. And to, in order to do that, you have to run many, many simulations and uh, adjust the parameters following certain algorithm. Now in Scilab, you can run cycle simulations in batch mode, change parameters, run them again, and this way, do model calibration very easily. Model reduction identification, once you have constructed your model, it's usually too complex, especially if you have a block diagram editor like Cycos, it's very easy to put together hundreds of blocks and you end up with a huge model. You want to reduce the model you have constructed or identify it. Again, you can use Scilab functions to do that within the same environment. You don't have to use a different software to do so. Filter design and controller, of course, uh, specialized toolboxes in Scilab are available for uh, filter design, controller synthesis. And very often when you have a model in Cycos, you want to test a controller for you. And well, how do you construct the controller? You just call the corresponding functions in Scilab available in the specialized toolboxes. You have it right away. You can do the simulation. You can change the parameters. Instead of changing the parameters of a, a filter by changing um, uh, the ABCD matrices, if you are familiar with the, the filters, uh, you can just change the cutoff frequency, the order, very easily. Now, what is it based on? Well, first of all, it's based on an open and documented formalism. Okay, so from the beginning, we started Cycos by not writing a program that you know does mu uh, simulation in continuous time and then adding what's necessary to make it also do discrete time and then think about how to make them work together. 
From the beginning, we thought of a formalism, which ins was inspired by synchronous languages, and in particular, an extension to continuous time dynamics, to model hybrid systems. And it is based on this formalism that Psychos was developed. Okay, having this uh, development in this uh, way, we end up with an e efficient simulation tool. And the code generation is very natural and it's close to optimal from the beginning. And uh, this is the, the, the formalism and uh, the way it's really programmed, of course, there is the hybrid part, the part that takes care of ha uh, the in interchange between continuous time and discrete time. There is a discrete time simulator, but the continuous time simulator, it's not us that have developed it. It is based on uh, well-known uh, routines, LSODAR and DASKR, uh, which is the new version of DASO. And uh, these, uh, these routines are interfaced within Scilab and so Psychos and are used by the simulator. However, they have been slightly modified uh, for the needs of Psychos. Some of the modification actually has been also incorporated in the official versions of this software. Now, what are the tools? Of course, Simulink from MathWorks, which is a, almost a world standard today. Uh, it's, a, it's a toolbox of MATLAB. I mean, you, you can have it when you have MATLAB, but you don't necessarily have it. You have to buy it separately. System Build, a very good software, initially developed by Wind Rivers as part of the Matrix X package. The, the only weak point, and that was the reason, as I mentioned before, it, it probably lost to Simulink, was the environment, which was not comparable to MATLAB. Okay. Now, Sim System Build was bought by MathWorks, and then there was a decision of the Department of Justice, and finally it was sold uh, to a national instrument. Another interesting product is Daimola. It is based on an open language, Modelica. The product is available from Dynasim, and Dynasim was recently bought by Dassault Systems, so it has uh, become a much bigger company now, and I think Modelica has uh, an interesting future. There are other, of course, more specialized uh, tools for simulation, specialized for, for elect electrical systems, uh, such as SPICE. But here I'm just you know, talking about general purpose simulation tools. Now, what are the advantages of using Psychos? Of course, it's free software. There are no licensing fees. And the generated code can be freely distributed. It is open source, easy to adapt to specific needs, and uh, because of that, there are many outside contributions today to, to Psychos. And when I say uh, adapted to specific needs, there are a number of examples. One of them is Electricity of France, for example, that has taken Psychos and has developed a tool around it. It's very, I mean, it's very similar, of course, to Psychos, but they have added features specific to their needs. Okay, this is easily done with uh, open source software. It is more difficult, of course, with closed software. There is a clear and documented formalism that makes it much easier to construct custom blocks when you know exactly how it works, uh, how the compiler works and how the simulator works. When you, when you want to construct a new block, it helps you a lot. And it also allows you to do co-simulation with other tools because there are no secrets behind the, the, uh, the way it works. Now the components, of course, as I mentioned before, there is the editor, it's a block diagram editor written in Scilab. The whole code is written in Scilab. It uses Scilab graphics, GUI. That puts some limitations, of course, in, on the editor. It may not look very professional, very nice, but uh, it is very easy to customize because it's very easy to program in Scilab, debug Scilab. The compiler is written in Scilab and C, mostly in C. Uh, the simulator is written in C, and uh, Fortran is just the numerical solvers are still in Fortran, but uh, all the, simu the simulator is written in C. There are a number of uh, black libraries, we call them palettes, available and in, in Psychos, and uh, each, block, uh, each block actually has two functions associated with it, one which is the interfacing function, what happens when I click on the block, how does it look like, and a simulation function, which is in general written in C. That's different from Simulink, with, where everything is written in one function. I mean, for those who will assist, will be present this afternoon at the hands-on lab session. We will see how to write new blocks and use existing blocks and so on. We have also put in a Modelica compiler, 
again, I'm not, I don't have the time to explain exactly what Modelica is. For those who are familiar with Modelica, they, 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 they will see that it is very important to have a Modelica compiler. I will give an example later. later. And there is a C code generator. Now, the current status, the documentation, there is a wide range of documentations available on our website, psychos.org, examples, online help, and so on. Uh, there's my book, which uh, gives the details about Scilab Psychos, mostly Psychos. And if you want to write new blogs and so on, I have a copy here if you want to consult. Uh, the underlying formalism is, as I said before, is uh, well adapted to current needs, it's, it's published. We have um, done minor extensions to the formalism to allow the integration of Modelica. And the, the formalism today allows, in most cases, to use Psychos instead of Simulink. So you can take Simulink, a Simulink diagram, and do the same thing in Psychos. There is no uh, tra automatic translator today, this is something that it's, it can be considered, uh, could be a project maybe done here. Uh, but the, the, the formalism allows it, okay? So there is, suff there is enough, uh, sufficiently powerful to do that. Uh, except for state flow, okay? We don't have for the moment the equivalent of state flow. Uh, the compiler uh, is a reliable code. We rewrote the compiler in 2004, it's fairly efficient. Well, the simulator is also uh, well tested now, uh, and the new recent extensions have been added for the usage of Modelica. And the C code generator, you can generate C code for single processor. If you have continuous time components in your model, then uh, instead of using a variable step solver used in Psychos, uh, we use fixed step solvers, which are embedded within the generated code. You can do specific code generation for real-time Linux. That's a contribution of Roberto Bucher. And uh, we can also generate Syndex code. Syndex is a INRIA product for multiprocessor environments. OK, I know many of you probably are uh, used to uh, Windows look and feel. When you uh, copy or uh, select, you want to do Control c Control v and so on. Okay, I'm not a fan of the, all that stuff. I, I find it much easier to, to, to use uh, the X Windows style, but there have been a, many, many demands to, uh, to add this feature in Psychos. So the next release, it will also have Windows look and feel, so you can do the usual selection copying facilities that are available in the Windows. We're gonna have better looking dialog boxes, and uh, we're gonna have more functionalities. For example, today when you have a Psychos diagram, you can only have one diagram active at a time, and you don't have the possibility of working with Scilab at the same time. Some of these uh, features will be added to the uh, new editor. And of course, the robustness is going to be improved. But another important uh, uh, feature which is not available today, but will be available, well, tomorrow in a generic sense of the word, uh, is uh, general data types. Today, most, all the only type of data exchange that's possible between blocks is the vector of double precision numbers, float double uh, vectors. Now, this is good for most uh, modeling and simulation applications, but when you, you want to generate code, especially for processors that don't have floating point capabilities, you would like to have uh, different data types, integers of you know, 8 bits, say 16 bits, signed, unsigned, and so on. So this will be added. But also data types of more general nature, for example, matrices. And with matrices, it is possible, for example, to write uh, the Riccati equation in Kalman filter using blocks, okay? Because it involves matrix products and matrix inversions and so on. So this already exists in beta. Uh, uh, version, but it is not in the 4.1 version, which we are going to use for the hands-on uh, lab this afternoon. It's going to be in the future release. And the Modelica language is, will be fully, uh, as fully as possible, uh, integrated in, the, in Psychos. We are, gonna, we are also working on hardware in the loop applications, and we want to be able to use uh, uh, hardware in the loop for uh, validating controllers, and for that we're gonna add more I.O. devices. And the debugging, there are debugging facilities, we shall see that, 
but uh, you will see that we need more debugging facilities. And the documentation, well, it's, it's never complete, it's never perfect, it's something that we're going to work on. And finally, that's the, probably an important point, we have added facilities for importing simulating diagrams, but there is no tra automatic translator today. Now, this is the typical Psychos diagram again. This was an application which was developed for Intertechnique. Intertechnique is a French company that makes uh, many things, but in particular oxygen masks for uh, pilots. And the problem they had was that they, they had an oxygen mask. They wanted to change the design, reduce the size, and make it lighter. And they had a vibration problem in the mask. And they want to have a model to find out what the problem was. So we built the model in Psychos, and we showed them, and they were actually quite happy with it because they, could find, they found out what the problem was. However, when the technicians looked at the diagrams, they weren't really happy with it because they said, well, we, are, we have mechanical diagrams, and they don't look anything like your psychos diagram. We like to see a pipe here. We like to see a nozzle here. We like to see a pressure chamber. And here you have, OK, mathematical equations. And the reason is that psychos is oriented, just like simulink. That means you have blocks with inputs and outputs. But when you have a pipe, well, what is the pipe? Is the pressure is the input, the, the flow is the input? Well, it depends. Just as an electrical circuit. I mean, electrical circuit, it's, it, you can, of course, model it using oriented blocks, but you have to change the nature of your diagram. It doesn't correspond uh, to the original electrical diagram, which the electrical engineer is familiar with. And uh, so you have to do some work to make the implicit diagram into an explicit diagram. Okay, that's why we used Modelica to add implicit blocks into Psychos. And here is an example. You have here an electrical circuit. Okay, it looks very much like an electrical circuit. Okay, there is no notion of input port, output port. For example, the resistor here has two ports. Okay, the left one is not an input, the right one is an input. You just have currents and voltages. And you have uh, the, equi the, uh, the resistor here simply says, OK, the, the, vo the difference between the voltages are related to the current flowing through this, um, these ports. And the, the current one is the negative of the other because the sum of the currents must be 0 and so on. S and this is mixed with standard blocks. In this case, it's just a vis visualization block. So in the Psychos environment, <coughs> we can now combine implicit blocks and explicit blocks. Now, what I'm going to do, because for those who are interested, we have the possibility to see uh, uh, all these features uh, this afternoon, just quickly uh, show you maybe uh, how the window looks like and how we can just run a simulation because I'm running out of time. OK, that's a typical Psychos diagram. It's a very small diagram, uh, but it is used. Uh, uh, it is a model in a neuro neurobiological model, I, I'm not really, I don't know exactly what the physics uh, behind this, uh, this is. It was done by somebody in our laboratory that works on these pro problems. Uh, but the idea is that you have a dynamical system, uh, you have a dynamical system which is excited by events which are randomly distributed in time and they have random values. So here I have a pulse generator, it generates events or activations, you should think of the red, um, links as activations. So you explicitly say this block here generates random events, and these random events excite some dynamical system with nonlinear dynamics. OK, if I look inside now, I open the super block. This is called the super block. I use another editor. And in this editor, you see random number generators and event delay. That's a block that generates an event when it receives, receives an event with certain delay. And the delay is variable because it is related to the random number generator here. Actually, it's a Poisson uh, uh, process that's, that is uh, generated. Here you have mathematical expressions. OK, so in this case, I have a mathematical expression written essentially in Scilab syntax or mathematical syntax, if you like and it is compiled. So this model can be simulated. I simply go to the simulate button and run it. So here I have the events randomly in space in time, and that's the result of the dynamic simulation. So very quickly, you can see the result and construct the model uh, using the, all these blocks that are existing blocks. Okay, I could have opened the palette, 
say, the sources, and I could copy uh, an element from here to here, and so on. Okay, so it's very easy to construct. So this is a particular block, this buffer. It's written in C. You have the possibility of programming directly in C your block, okay, the dynamics of your block. That's a very nice feature because uh, you, you don't find what you're, you're looking for in the, in the, in the palettes. You take this spe uh, special block and you write exactly what you want your, the block to do in C language. And what happens when you run the simulation, when well, you compile actually, what happens, so it went too fast. The, the, pro the C program generates a C file, it is compiled, and it is linked incrementally with Scilab. Serge mentioned that we can do incremental linking, and you can see the result here, link done. Okay, so that's, uh, I'm not, I don't want to get into detail what the, the, the program does, but this is a buffer simulated in C language. And then there we have an FFT that uh, computes the FFT over a sliding window. Okay, that's a diagram with a PID controller. Actually, there's a, there is a P and a D. And uh, these blocks are simply a GUI, a TK widget that allows you to adjust the value of the, the P and uh, D uh, gains. So I run it quickly, you will see exactly what's useful. That's the input, which is a step. Oh no, it's this backward step. And this is the output, which is, well, it depends on what you want to do. It's probably not satisfactory because the P gain is zero and the D gain is zero. Now I can change the value of P gain and play with it in order to find maybe an optimal, okay, controller parameters. If you go out of bound, then it becomes unstable and it doesn't simulate. So you have to be careful when you play, especially with the D value. Uh, here I have a Scilab program that calls the simulator and runs it in batch mode. Psycho simulate is the Scilab function <coughs> that runs a simulation in Psychos. So this program runs many, many times a simulation to find an optimum controller. Now, as you can see, there are different simulation uh, runs here. At every run, the parameter is changed. And at the end, we, we just visualize uh, the cost function associated with each parameter. And we see it here on a 3D plot. Of course, we could have used optimization function to optimize it and so on.